Hi, I'm Sean Gannett, and this is Minute Math, and today we're learning about use a formula to solve a real-world application. Minute Math, Minute Math, when you need help you use Minute Math. So our first example here is 3, and it's talking about Andrew. It takes Andrew 30 minutes to drive to work in the morning. He drives home using the same route, but it takes 10 minutes longer and he averages 10 miles per hour less in the morning. How far does Andrew drive to work? Okay, first thing here, the formula. The distance formula we know is distance equals rate, excuse me, times time, all right? Now on his trip to work, it took him 30 minutes, which is equal to half an hour. So what we can do is set up what we know about each variable. We have our distance for his trip. We have the rate and the time. And what we're going to go through here is when he's going to work and when he's going home. Okay? The values for each one. Well, the distance is the same. The distance to work and the distance home, they told us, is the same. But our rate, let's say if his rate is a set rate going to work, is R, it takes him a total here of, let's go, they said 30 minutes, which is equal to half an hour. Okay. Now, he says uh, on his way home, though, right, it says it takes him 10 minutes longer, and he averages 10 miles per hour less. Okay? So, the rate there is whatever his rate on the way to work was, minus 10, because he goes 10 miles per hour less. And his time, they told us here, was 40 minutes, or it said 10 minutes longer, so 30 minutes plus 10 is 40 minutes, which 40 minutes of a full hour, right? 40 divided by 60 is two thirds. So we have two thirds of an hour was his time, okay? So what we can do is find an equation here for each one of his trips, okay? So to uh, do it like this, I guess. So put it together, so work, on his way to work, it's distance equals his rate times one half. And then when he's going home, equation we can model is his distance is equal to r minus 10 times 2 thirds. Okay? All right. And so they ask him how far does Andrew drive to work? So we want to find what the value of d is. What's the distance there? So the way we have to go about that is we take our two equations, right, our two different ones, and we actually can set them equal to, and we want to find the r value here. So the first one of r times one half equals the second part, which is r minus 10 times two thirds. And now we want to simplify this, and or solve really, for r. So r times one half is really one half r. And the right hand side we can distribute the two thirds, and so we have two thirds r minus 10 times two thirds, which is 20 thirds. All right, so in our goal still to get r by itself, we're going to subtract the two-thirds of the r to both sides. Okay? And by doing so, one-half r minus two-thirds r is a negative one-sixth r, and that's equal to negative twenty-thirds. From there, we're going to multiply both sides by a negative six. All right, let's be multiplied here. That's going to cancel this stuff out here, leaving us with r left over. And negative 20 over 3 times a negative 6 is a positive 40. Okay? So his rate to work is 40 miles per hour. Okay? That's what we found. That's the r value, the rate on his way to work. So now we want to find the distance, right? That was the goal, the distance to work. So the easier of the two formulas is d equals r times one half, right? The first one to work. You can plug this value into either one, but the first one's easier, make your life easier. So we want to find the distance. So our rate is 40 times one half. And there we have 40 times one half is 20. And so his distance to work we have found is 20 miles. Okay, so now we're going to go hop into another example here. Uh, bear with me. I'm going to go erase this and I'll see you in a moment. Mm -hmm. 
So now we have an example four. I'm going to call this the perimeter problem. The perimeter of a rectangular outdoor patio is 54 feet. So they tell us here we have a re uh, rectangular outdoor patio and our perimeter is equal to 54 feet. The length of this, okay, the length of the patio, the L value is equal to 3 feet, important to note, and also well, 3 feet <laughs> greater than the width. Okay, so 3 feet plus the width right there. So our L value here, L, is equal to 3 plus the width. Okay. What are the dimensions of the patio? Got a lot of myself. Same thing, I just put feet there, but let's look at that one. And this one. Okay. Well, we have our patio here, and we have width here, and we have the length. And, or that L, we can do it like this, make it more consistent there. And that's equal to 3 plus W, okay? So that length is 3 plus W, and with width is W. But what do we know about the perimeter? Perimeter is equal to 2L plus 2W, okay? Well, let's plug in what we know. Perimeter is 54, okay? And L is equal to 3 plus W, 2 times 3 plus W plus 2W, and now we have an equation with one variable. We can solve for that variable. 54 stays here. 2 times 3, distribute there as a 6. 2 times a w is 2w plus 2w here. Okay? 2w plus 2w is a, um, well, subtract a 6 first to both sides. 54 minus 6 is 48. And 2w plus 2w is 4w. Divide both sides by 4 here. You should be pretty good at this. And W is now by itself. And 48 divided by 4 is 12. So we have the width here is 12. But we want to find the length. Good thing we can plug it into that formula, which we've already come up with. And so L equals 3 plus 12. And 3 plus 12 is, oh, a good old 15. And so now we have a length of 15, a width of 12, and those are the dimensions of the patio. The patio has a length of 12, and a, a length of 15, a width of 12, and those two dimensions give you a perimeter of 54 feet, okay? So let's go solve another problem here. I'm gonna erase this, and I'll see you in a moment. So now we're gonna solve an area problem here. They tell us this. The perimeter of a tablet of graph paper is 48 inches. So let's go note that. P equals 48 inches. The length is 6 inches more than the width, and we want to find the area of the paper. So the area of the paper we want to find, and they say the length is 6 inches more than the width. Okay, so that means the length W, or the length L, is our width plus 6 there, okay? And so we know, obviously, this piece of paper, right? If we have a picture here of it. We have, let's say, our um, width here and our L, and our L is W plus 6, okay? So what we're going to do is that we're going to try to find these values, L and W, and use that to find the A, okay? So in the previous example, we did something very similar to this. We knew that the perimeter is equal to 2L plus 2W. And what we're going to do is plug in what we know to try to find a missing variable here. P is 48 here. And 2 times L we know is W plus 6. And 2 times W is left over. And now we have one variable W that we can solve for. Distribute here. 2 times W is 2W. And 2 times 6 is 12. And we bring down the 2w and bring down the 48. Okay? We can subtract 12 to both sides here. And 48 minus 12 is a 36. And 2w plus this 2w is 4w. Divide both sides by 4. And we're left with w by itself. And 36 divided by 4 is 9. So we found a w value of 9. We use that information to find L. So L is w plus 6, which w is 9, so 9 plus 6, and we have 15, right? So L 
is equal to 15. So we have W is 9, L is 15. We can find the area. Area is equal to length times width of a rectangle. Hopefully you know that. And so our length here is 15. W is 9. Multiply them together. 15 times 9 is 135. And they told us in the beginning this is inches. So it's inches squared. Okay, so the area of the graph paper is 135 inches squared. All right, so now I'm going to go erase this problem. I've only got one more left to do. So number six here is a volume problem, and they tell us this. Find the dimensions of a shipping box, given that the length is twice the width height is 8 inches, and the volume is 1,600 inches squared. Okay, so we want to find all the dimensions there. So the first thing, we can kind of go in here, that the length is equal to twice the width. Okay, so length is equal to twice the width. The height is equal to 8 inches, and the volume is 1,600 inches cubed. Okay. All right, well, what's the formula for the volume of a box? V equals, right, that's length times width times height, okay? So now we have pretty much everything we need to do or have to solve it. What we're gonna do here is plug in what we know into this formula, okay? So length is 2w, okay? So if we know our volume, so let's go volume first, volume, plug it in, is 1,600 is equal to length, which is 2w, times our width, times our height, which is 8. And we're going to use this to solve for w, okay? So bring down 1,600, 2w times w, and, and times 8, so 2 times 8, 16, w, w, w squared. So we have 16 here, w squared. Then from there, I need to divide both sides by 16. W squared is right here. And 1600 divided by 16 is 100. We square root both sides. Only really care about the positive value because we can't really have a negative dimension, right? Square root of 100 is just 10. We'll keep it positive. And now we have, well, our W is equal to 10 inches. Our um, height, we know, already is equal to 8 inches, and our length, right, our length is 2 times w, and 2 times w being 10, hopefully you can see that as 20, so our length here is 20 inches, and now we have found all the main dimensions here of our box, w equals 10, height is 8, l is 20 inches, okay? I hope this video was informative for you. If so, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. This helps us make more free math lessons for you. And as always, thanks for watching. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use minute math. Minute math, minute math. When you need help, you use minute math. Minutemathtutor.com.